if you're like most people, you probably haven't had great luck in brushing your dog. Now, I mean, maybe the tolerance is there, but she's not like really happy about it. That's how it goes for most people, but it doesn't have to be that way. This week's video is gonna really help you with the basic task that all dog owners have to do, brushing. Now, with the help of the students in my online course, we are going to get your dog loving this activity. And I'll answer some of the common questions about the best types of brushes and how often you should be doing it. Now, I used to work as a dog groomer, so I've got some experience to share with you today. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Did it surprise you when I said I used to groom dogs for a living? Did you think I was only a dog trainer? I've actually done a lot of things with dogs, including boarding, training for TV commercials, grooming, and even running an exercise gym for dogs. I'm gonna probably keep surprising you with all the experience I have when it comes to dogs. So if you wanna get notified when I share more great stuff from all my experience, hit that subscribe button. Now, before we talk about brushing, I wanna dig into those pictures we saw earlier. This is gonna be a great lesson in body language. Understanding the body language of a dog is actually one of my favorite lessons to teach our students. And we have a pretty intensive lesson on it in my online course. My students loved it so much, we created additional mini lessons in the course. Now, in those lessons, we review different body parts on your dog and what each one might be telling you. It's a lot more detailed and it's super interesting. But today, I'm just gonna point out a few things that I noticed from these pictures. So take a look at this one. Now, I see the eyes are closed, the tight facial muscles, the leaning away and in the extremely flat tongue, and he's panting. These are all signs of stress and discomfort. So check out this picture here. This dog is actually looking away, which is his way of saying, I'm not a threat, but you're making me uncomfortable. The whale eye and the rigid body and the ears pinned back also indicate that he's really stressed. Now this one might seem like the dog is smiling. So he's okay, right? Nope. He's actually got a closed eye, a wide mouth. He's panting with a tongue far out and he's actually, looks like he's leaning away. All signs of stress. Now, if I were the groomer, I would have stopped at this point and I were, would be working on helping the dog become more comfortable. Some people say, what's the big deal? Just get over it. Nah, that's not my style. Not only is it dangerous for the human, but it's really not at all kind or loving to the dog. Listen, dogs have a pretty high tolerance for stress. They're already adjusting to their natural instincts and to live in a human world. We're asking them to go potty where we want, to not eat food from certain places in the home, even if it's available to them, to refrain from chasing the cats, avoid jumping when excited, and to not chew on their favorite humans. Now, if you really think about it, dogs in a human world are a lot like a square peg in a round hole, but they do amazingly well fitting into our world. So when it comes to an activity that they don't like, but we have to do, we owe it to them to introduce it and carry it out in a way that causes the least amount of stress. Now the same goes for things like nail clipping, vet exams, and teeth brushing. This is so true for other animals too. Have you ever seen elephants being treated at a rehabilitation center or a zoo? Or someone taking care of horses' hooves? Did you think that those professionals could just walk up and grab the animal and start doing their thing? There's no way. Those animals are way too big and too strong and they could probably hurt the handler. So those handlers use what we call cooperative care when getting their job done. One of my favorite books on this topic is written by Deborah Jones. She really does a deep dive into what we're talking about here today. So if this is the kind of thing that interests you or you're thinking of being an elephant handler, you should probably get the book. <laughs> Cooperative care means gaining the animal's trust and asking permission to do the task. We do this by desensitization of the task and pairing it with something positive, usually involving food, and also watching body language carefully. It also means giving the animal a chance to say no or not right now. When the animal asks to take a break or stop the activity, we listen. Over time, this builds up trust between the animal and the handler. Now, this approach might take a little bit longer in the beginning, but it saves so much time and stress over the lifetime of the animal. Now, I also wanna say that simply because we can, doesn't mean we should. That means that just because we can stronghold most dogs into being brushed, it doesn't mean it's gonna benefit you. Your dog 
or your ongoing relationship. It'll probably do the opposite. Okay, a few tips on brushing tools before we get started. Here are a few brushes I recommend. Now I love this one here, the combo brush. It also is called the pin brush for longer haired dogs because it gets close to the skin and can loosen up those mats. And the softer side can be used on the tummy or around the face where the hair is shorter. I like slicker brushes for short haired dogs that shed a lot. These are the kind of brushes that help loosen up the shedding hairs and pull them away from the body. And metal combs are great for longer haired dogs that mat easily. Now these combs allow you to get close to the skin where the mats start to form first. Those are the ones I really like, but there's also one that I suggest that you be careful of. It's called the Furminator. People often think that they are the best because they seem to pull a ton of hair off their dog but you can easily give your dog brush burn if you brush it for too long. Although it will get a lot of hair off, what people don't realize is that the little combs on the brush are sharp little blades that actually cut the hair. So it's gonna always seem like you're never done brushing your dog. In addition, many undercoats of dogs are actually designed to keep them a little bit cooler. So taking away a lot of that hair is not necessarily a good thing. Okay, before we get to the good stuff, here's my last tip on brushing. Many people ask me how often you should brush. Well, it's gonna actually depend on your dog and on his or her coat. This is actually a good question to ask your groomer and will really vary based on your dog's genetics and breed. So I actually brush Pickles, my Cavalier, two or three times a week. Harper, my Great Dane, gets a brush about once a week or every other week. She doesn't need a lot. And Wesley, my standard poodle, needs daily brushing. Poodle owners, you know what I'm talking about. Now, let's get started on helping your dog enjoy brushing. Now, I wanna break this training down into four phases for you. Now, I do this because the number one human error on this task is going too quickly. So, start by lowering your expectations and prepare to take it achingly slow it's gonna pay off in the end. Now we recently worked on this exact process with students enrolled in my online course at the pro level. Now these puppy parents are in the private Facebook group served by three certified trainers, including me. They can ask as many questions as they'd like and they get detailed knowledgeable answers every time. And they can also attend three group Zoom calls each week to get great advice. They also have access to some additional training resources, including a workbook and lessons on challenging puppy behaviors. We try to make it fun in that group while we're all learning a lot. So in May, we did a challenge. It was called the May I Brush You, and it was all about brushing our dogs with their consent. We outlined the process in four distinct steps, and we challenged all our puppy parents not to rush the process. Now, even if the dog seemed pretty okay with the brush, we really wanted everyone to take it nice and slow and even begin the introductions all over again. All right, here's the four phases of how to introduce brushing to your dog. During phase one, you're gonna show the brush to your puppy without bringing it close to her. Then you'll remove the brush and deliver a few tasty treats on a snuffle mat. Now the snuffle mat allows the dog to sniff and hunt for the treat which they enjoy and it also brings down their heart rate so it keeps the activity calm and pleasant. Now, if your dog appears comfortable, you can repeat the process about three to five times. Then put the brush away and end the session with a treat scatter. Now you might do this every day for a few minutes or you might do it every few days. It really depends on how comfortable your dog is. Now you can do it more often if she's comfortable, but less often if she's not so sure. I know that it might be the opposite of what you thought, but that's how we build up a positive association by not pushing this too fast. This is Simone and Oakley. You can see that Simone is simply showing the brush and tossing the treats. She's using a snuffle mat and Oakley is having a great time. The body language is relaxed, he's participating without hesitation, and there are no signs of stress like we saw in those pictures earlier. I love this video because everybody's calm. There are no distractions around and it seems like nothing's happening at all. Good training will look like this. Oakley is learning that the brush is no big deal. All right, here's another one for you. This is Debbie and Archie. I love this video because Debbie is so patient and calm and is letting Archie take this time to return to the exercise. Humans often rush the process, but if we take it a little slower, it often progresses faster. Now in this case, Archie's building up a further positive association because he's sniffing around and enjoying himself. Nice job being patient, Debbie. Now I also like that both of these videos show the puppy parents on the floor. Now if either of these students had been standing up, 
it could have easily changed the dynamics of the game. It could have been intimidating for the pup, or it could have been promoting some jumping for treats. Now, don't make it any harder on your dog to be successful. A lot of dog training takes place at their level not ours. All right, let's move on to phase two of this training. Now you're gonna wanna advance to the second phase only if your puppy is saying yes when the brush comes out. Now your puppy saying no might look like these pictures I showed at the beginning of the video, or your puppy's moving away or trying to bite at the brush or your hand. Now in phase two, I want you to slowly move the brush towards your puppy, but do not touch the brush to your puppy yet. Then deliver a few tasty treats on the snuffle mat and then remove the brush. I'm gonna have you repeat this about three to five times, then put the brush away and end the session with a treat scatter. Again, you can do this every few days or even once a day if your pup seems to be loving it. You can probably guess what phase number three looks like. You're gonna slowly move the brush towards your puppy and lightly touch it to their green zone. All right, a green zone is a location on your pup's body that they have enjoyed having touched. When the brush is touching your puppy, deliver a few tasty treats on the snuffle mat. Now when the pup looks up from the snuffle mat, this means you can continue the exercise. This is your yes signal. Repeat this about three to five times and then put the brush away and end the session with a treat scatter. This is Tanjula and Master. Isn't he the cutest little thing? He's pretty comfortable with the brush coming out and even looks to Tanjula for the treat. That's a great sign. Notice how slowly and calmly Tanjula is doing this work. That keeps the entire process enjoyable for everyone. This is Carrie and Roxy. I love this video because Carrie started to notice that Roxy was giving a clear no thank you when it came to the brush and being touched. So Carrie took a step back and worked with it from a distance for a little bit longer. This is actually a great example of cooperative care where you're letting the dog have a decision about the interaction. Now you can see here, after a few days of taking it slower and not getting the brush so close, Carrie had successfully gained permission from Roxy to touch her with it now. This is Kathleen and Josie. Now you can see that she's getting a little further into the process by holding the brush there for a little bit longer. Now Josie was fine with this advancement in the process and is also almost ready for the actual brushing. Now after this video, we advised Kathleen to give it just a little bit more of a pause between brushing touching fur and the treat coming out. Now, that sounds like such a simple little adjustment, but those are the kinds of things that trainers will recognize and help your training go more efficiently. Okay, our last phase is where the brushing happens. You're probably saying, finally. <laughs> You're only gonna wanna advance to the fourth phase if your puppy is saying, yes please, when the brush comes out. Now in this exercise, I want you to slowly move the brush towards your puppy. Lightly touch it to their green zone and just do a few brushes. Deliver a few tasty treats onto the snuffle mat while the brush is touching the pup. Now, if the pup looks up from the snuffle mat, that means you can keep going. Repeat this three to five times, put the brush away, and then end the session with a treat scatter. Here's Kathleen again with that final phase of the challenge. As you see, she's now brushing Josie, and Josie is content with being brushed. This is the goal we're working on. And this is an excellent example of how we can work up to it in a way that builds a relationship with our dogs, but also allows us to get necessary grooming done. Now at the end of the challenge, Kathleen told us, this challenge definitely gave me a sense of the sequencing, the timing and the mechanics and pacing and the assessment needed with exposure to anything and I've applied it to other parts of our training. Kathleen is a teacher and often comments how much overlap she sees between training Josie and teaching kids. All right, that's all the time I have for you today, but wasn't that fantastic? If you liked that, you're gonna love being a part of the online course where we do a fun challenge like this every month. All right, check out the link in the description below for the details on the course. In the comments below, tell me, how old is your puppy and how does he or she feel about being brushed?